Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, what my my second degree amendment would do would basically to be to close the loophole that yours would open, and that is to allow the FAA administrator to consider all sorts of other types of training to be counted towards the minimum flying hour rules. I, I agree with you. I have communities in Illinois that desperately need regional air service, and I'll work with you and I'll work with anyone to try to find ways to improve that. Uh, SCASA, whatever it is, I will be there with you. But please, let's not promote regional air service by first degrading the pilot qualification and pilot training requirements. FAA regulations, FARs, for, for, for those of us who are pilots, uh, we always um, say uh, uh, with, with macabre humor that FAA regulations are written in blood. And this shows you that the FAA regulation is written in blood. And the amendment, your amendment, Mr. Chairman, would bring us back to those early days when there was a lot of blood. And, and we can do better than that. Um, as you can imagine, I've known a lot of pilots in my lifetime. Uh, but I've yet to meet a successful pilot who thinks that training alone is adequate substitution for skills and judgment sharpened through actual experience. As Captain Sullenberger and Jeff Skiles uh, says about experience, there's, it's not an easy feat to land a commercial airliner without engines in the Hudson River, without a single fatality. But what they said that was really important is that, and I quote, it was teamwork, skill, knowledge, and the kind of judgment that only comes from experience that led to their success eat that day. I'd also like to um, uh, quote another pilot um, uh, whose words I think are relevant to this, and that is um, uh, uh, the first officer in that Kogan aircraft, and I apologize that this is so traumatic for the family members who are in the audience, but this is what she said. I've never seen icing conditions. I've never de-iced. I've never seen any. I've never experienced any of that. I don't want to have to experience that and make those kinds of calls. You know, I would have freaked out. I'd have had, like, seen this much ice and thought, oh my gosh, we were going to crash. And eight minutes later, she was dead along with all of her passengers. This is what we need to prevent from happening with these minimum uh, hour requirements and to give the latitude back to where it was before this law was put into effect to allow someone sitting in a hotel ballroom watching a video to count that towards a flying hour requirement is wrong. And that's what we're talking about. This would allow uh, them to say this is what it's, this counts. Kogan Air used to give out a CD-ROM on icing for their pilots and their first officers to watch, and that was what prepared them for fly for icing condition. Mr. Chairman, I've flown in icing condition and scared the living daylights out of myself and said never again would I do what I did that day, and it taught me to be a better pilot and, more importantly, to stand up to those who were higher-ranking officers than myself and say, no, we are not going to do that. Nothing takes the place of actual experience. And I just want to say again, this issue needs to be separated from the regional air carrier issue. We all have issues with finding access to regional air carriers. And let me also say that the Dr. Smith, whom you quoted, is an employee of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University who is endorsing this program. And part of Embry-Riddle's success, and they train many wonderful, successful pilots, but they're in the desert, a place where they never see icing conditions. Part of their success and continued success is to be able to keep students in that pipeline. And if they can get those students into the regionals even faster, they can send more students through. So there's a profit motive here that we need to question. But we have to figure out a way to help Embry-Riddle be successful. We have to bring, find a way to be able to help regional airlines be successful and be profitable. But let's not do it here, because if we vote for this, we are writing and we will be writing future regulations again in blood. This is what will happen. And the next accident that happens involving a first officer or pilots without the experience levels that we put in here, someone who gets their training from a CD-ROM or a hotel course room that counts towards those 1,500 hour flying requirements, that'll be on us. This august body before I ever joined it, either in the House or here in the Senate, passed this before. 
let's not undo the work that's done, but let's get together and find a way to address a regional airlines issue. And so I ask the chairman to please consider withdrawing your amendment, and I will work with you and, and, and on this issue. This is too important in our economy, but more importantly, let's not do this in blood. Thank you.